Next, uh, we're going to introduce some notation. We've already used some. Um, our first type of notation that we're going to use with sets is what's called uh, set listing notation. Sometimes people will just call this set notation, but uh, that is uh, not clear. We had all those examples on our first slide. Uh, all of those were in listing notation. The important thing, um, well, listing notation is just what it sounds like. You list out the elements. It is important that you use these braces, or what are sometimes called curly brackets, to enclose the list. Uh, your braces do not have to look beautiful, but they must look different from the parentheses. They are not parentheses, and they are not square brackets. They are their own symbol. Uh, the next type is what's called set builder notation, which uses a rule to determine what's in the set. And finally, we'll use interval notation for uh, one specific type of set, an interval of real numbers. <clears throat> set builder notation is useful under certain circumstances, only for certain sets. Uh, sometimes it's easiest to describe a set by stating the properties that its elements have. For example, you could have a set X, so this set contains X's. We read this vertical bar as a where or a such that, such that. So this is the set of all X's where X is a one-digit positive number. and this is something that is easy to put in listing notation, and you would have the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Because these are all of the elements that qualify for this rule. Um, another thing that we can do, instead of just having a variable by itself before the vertical bar, you can have some kind of say what the universal set is or say what set your elements are coming from. So x is in the set of natural numbers. So this is the set of all, of all natural numbers where x is less than 10. Now remember our natural numbers are also our counting numbers. That Those were two word, two phrases for the same set. So again, this is the set, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have two different ways of specifying the exact same set, and these aren't the only two ways of, of specifying this set. Um, set builder notation is very useful because it can say what rule you're looking at, but these two things are equal to one another. So if I gave you a question of express the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 with set builder notation, both of these would be correct. <clears throat> so now this one is a little bit different. We don't just have an x in front of the bar. What we have is a 3x. Now the qualification on x is that x has to be a natural number. But the things in the set aren't just x. The things in the set are 3x. So your natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. The things in this set would be those numbers times 3. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on. This can be a very useful way of specifying certain sets, being able to put something more than just x in front of the vertical bar. So what goes in front of the vertical bar tells us what is in the set. Then you have the vertical bar. And after the vertical bar, you tell the rules, the properties uh, that qualify what's in the set. you can have more than one property that needs to be satisfied as well. So here we have the same kind of set, the same beginning. So 3x, these are the things that are in the set. My vertical bar that I can read as such that or so that or where. So these are all the 3x's. 
so that x is a natural number, which are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Uh, here though also x has to be less than or equal to 8. So we're going to have something similar to this, but instead of going on forever with the dot dot dot, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 20, I'm oh, sorry, 8, 15, 18, 21, and 24, and then we stop. Now, we want to make sure everyone knows why we're stopping at 24. Remember, it's three x's that are in the set. And x has to be less than or equal to 8. So 8 is the biggest x we're going to use. And 3 times 8, well, that gives us that 24. Our next example, this is somewhat similar to the second example except instead of having x in the natural numbers, we're going to take our x's from the real numbers, which remember the real numbers are everything that's a point on the number line. And we will have all of the x's between 2 and 5. And, oh, oh well, that was, this part wasn't supposed to show up yet. Um, but since it's real numbers and, and not the natural numbers like before, you can't actually list out all of the real numbers. There's no way to list out all real numbers without missing some. So this particular interval cannot be represented with a list. It just can't be done. Um, so set builder notation can frequently be useful when you have some and this is a set that has an infinite number of things in them, it's just not possible to list it out. Sometimes it is possible to express an infinite list with, uh, sorry, an infinite set with a list. Like here, we were able to use a pattern and dot, 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 but here we can't list them out. We can use this set builder notation, or this is actually a very special kind of set. It is real numbers, so on the number line, between two particular numbers, and that is a type of set that we call an interval. And an interval actually has its own special notation. You are probably familiar with this uh, kind of notation from high school. You may not have thought of it in a while and may not have thought of it ever in the context of sets, but an interval is just a set of real numbers with this particular property. Uh, if you take two things in the set, every number that lies between those two things is also in the set. You don't ever have breaks or hiccups or anything with an interval. So the endpoints of an interval may or may not be included in the set, and our interval notation will depend on that. And since most people are familiar with inter interval notation, we won't spend too much time on it. You use the square brackets when the endpoint is included. So this is everything between 3 and 5, including both endpoints. This is the interval from 3 to 5, where we include the endpoint at 3, but we do not include the endpoint at 5. Uh, and this is the opposite where we include the endpoint at 5, but not the endpoint at 3. Uh, and this is the open interval, where neither endpoint is included. And finally, your endpoints don't actually have to be, or, well, your designation doesn't really have to be a point. Sometimes you will have an interval that goes on forever, and so you can use a positive or negative infinity. A negative infinity would always be on the left side, positive infinity on the right side. If you have an interval like that, which we call an unbounded interval, you always use a parenthesis because there isn't an endpoint to include. Uh, so you definitely always use a parenthesis with an unbounded interval. 
So that gives you enough to work exercises 16 through 31. Do that, check your answers, and um, then come back and unpause the video.